Hey, I'm Julie Lynn Moray and welcome back to my channel. As a part of my amazing cooks and their go-to meals, we've been invited to the Ward residence. They're gonna show us how they do a backyard barbecue. They're gonna do a smoked Boston butt on a green egg with some homemade coleslaw and I'm gonna pair it with some corn salad. So let's get cooking. Ding dong. Hi. Double O Cajun, what's up, man? Double O Dirt Road. Good to see you, good to see you, welcome. So, Elroy needed Jake, Tango needs cash. Every <laughs> crime fighter needs a partner in crime. It's my boy here, Double O Dirt Road. Bring it, baby. And his beautiful wife, Miss Tamara Ward. Hi, and you get welcome. These. <laughs> Thank you so much. Clearly, we're the fancy ones. <laughs> They're and the we fabulous so ones. We just, we, we just balance it out, yin and yang, right? That's all it is. Good. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, what are we doing, my mind? Rub the butt. <laughs> rub the big butt, rub the big butt, yeah! Who wants to rub the butt? Me. Who wants to get their hands dirty? Me. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna use the butt rub. This is out of Santa Rosa Beach, Florida. Wait, love. is that how you rub the pig butt? We, we'll put this on second. But we love butt rub because this guy's down at Seagrove Beach. That's our spot. And, and mustard. We use, little, we use a little salt on top of that. But we start out with mustard because this is like the glue, right? It keeps everything on. It does. Okay, who wants to get their hands dirty? Me, in me, rub me. It? Now rub it on all over. Mm. Who's going to get their hands dirty? I'm not doubting. I'm not doubting getting that big butt. Look at Once mustard. those hands get good and dirty, we use these butt wipes. <laughs> after rubbing the butt. All right, so we're gonna put the butt rub on. Again, I would be doing this with my clean hand, but Brantley is doing it with his hand. Okay, that's good, bud. So you see how it's kind of mounded on there, and then you gotta rub it in. You wanna rub it in deep inside the meat. Rub the butt. Rub the butt before you smoke the hog. <laughs> oh, that's gonna, it's gonna taste good. But this much of so it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. So it's no big deal if when you're doing this, you get it down on the bottom of your pan or your Pyrex, because what you're gonna turn around and do is you'll just rub your meat back in that butt rub. All right, so this butt is ready to rock. Good to go. Okay, so after you rub the meat with the uh, seasoning, you wanna come back with salt, and you'll douse it all over the whole thing. Again, you got a clean hand. And, and rub again, probably. And then a dirty hand. And probably rub again. Oh, right there. That you so, Kurt, that real quick. Right there. Why yeah. do you use salt on top of the um, butt rub? I don't think there's any salt in that butt rub, and it really just makes a better flavor at the end of the day. Good to know. All right. But you'll learn when we pull this thing apart, how you put the seasoning on, how you put the salt on, dictates how you want to pull it apart. We'll show you that later. So uh, what do we do if you're green to the green egg? We throw a little segment in here on, you know, how to get dirty, talking about dirt road, talking about Cajuns, you're talking about raw folks, right? If you want to keep your nails clean and your hands clean, this may not be the thing for you. So Blake, should we kick it off? Let's do it. If, uh, if you don't want to get your hands dirty, you might as well order it pre-made or go to your local butcher and see if he got one. But if you're ready to get down, this is how you're going to do it. Yeah, I think my dad said if he buys barbecue from like a, uh, a local barbecue shop, it's like $7 a pound or something. Yeah. I mean, this thing right here, we did, we did a double. Um, we got $24 for, it's about a dollar a pound. We smoke this thing, you're going to turn out right. You can you help get two butts, you can probably see anywhere between 20, 25 people easy. Damn! Yeah, half pound of meat, that's a lot of meat for some folks, so. All right, so let's start out. What you basically got to do is learn how this, this uh, green egg or Komodo Joe or whatever you're going to use as a smoker is going to work. So we're going to show you a couple tips on that. It's all about ventilation. So this is what you use whenever you're closing it up at night uh, to like for, for not using it, but it's just like a chimney and a fireplace, right? You want to let as much air come out of the top as you can. And I don't know if you can get down here to the bottom, but this is your vent at the bottom. So it's all about airflow. The more air you let in at the bottom and the more air you let out at the top, the higher the heat. So the equation is the higher the airflow, the higher the heat. 
And these puppies can get up to 600 if you want to really sear a steak. You know, you want to get some hot, hot temps, but you want to be careful when you're doing that. Here's a pro tip. If you're running this thing wide open and you got it at 600, you want to bump that thing before you open it. What do you think happened, double O Cajun, if I open that thing wide open at 600? You're going to have some barber doll arms. Yeah. You're going to you, lose all your hair on your arms. You're going to roast it up and you could really do something worse than that because you open that thing and all that oxygen get in there at 600. No dice, brother. Don't do it. So again, if you're running 600, when you get up that temperature, kind of bump it like that a few times. Be nice and safe. You gotta talk to it. You gotta marinate it. You gotta feel it. You gotta let it breathe a little bit. Put a little love on it, like That's you would your rub. All right. So we got it wide open on the bottom, wide open on the top, and we're gonna use what's called a loof lighter. There's a couple different methods you can use to get this thing fired up. I like the loof lighter. It's a glorified hair dryer. But you know, you gotta have power nearby, so if you don't have power, you can use something else. Never, ever, never use lighter fluid and regular charcoal, okay? We may not have mentioned it. We like meathead charcoal. It's a good burning charcoal. Local here in Georgia burns for a long time, but it's mostly you'll see there is hardwood charcoal. It's lump charcoal. Do not use regular, you know, grilled charcoal. And you got some people that'll put chips, they'll put apple, they'll put hickory. What's your thought on any other? Yeah, the big thing, if you're gonna try and smoke some different wood in there, like, like see, I got some old apple wood right there. You know, you can throw stuff like that in there, but you gotta, you gotta soak that overnight ahead of time. You really gotta get that wood moist so it don't burn up too quick and you get the smoke out of it. And it's just more time. Mm -hmm. So I go for just a little more streamlined, straightforward approach, and I use apple juice and water. And we'll show you how to mix those in in a minute. But you can smoke it out a little more. You can inject your meat with some different things. There's a lot of fancy things. I think there's a, a, a class called Pork U, you mm -hmm. know, you know, different things you can go to if you really want to learn all the details. But it's just a clean, quick, first rounder, green to the green egg type scenario. So when you use your loop lighter, what you're going to do is you're basically going to plug it in and you're going to push the trigger. You know, they won't leave you an on switch because they don't want you to burn it up. But you'll push that trigger and you'll leave it in until you see some sparks will start to fly and you'll see some coals start to get orange. Now what I'm told is a little bit of rite of passage is you got to get a little bit of that charcoal dust on you. You put it under like eye black. Therefore, you know you come to war and you're ready to get some and do a little damage yeah <laughs> and if, if you don't have eye black on i mean if you're really feeling it you know you just got to get it out and get after it sometimes that, that's it know. see that's what i'm talking about all right see look at there double occasion we already got that we already got that hot we already got that spark watch out man this ain't fourth of july yet. that's right you away. we don't want a okay. firecracker that firecracker. thing but that right there is all you need and that's enough flame you're so less than a minute that thing is ready to go you ignited like yeah. you said no lighter fluid you don't want to throw a lot of fluid on there because the next thing you know, you're going to have an explosion. You're going to lose all your facial hair. You're not going to have any eyebrows. You're going to be looking like powder. And we don't want powder. And that lighter fluid will make your meat taste wrong. Don't mm -hmm. do that. All right, so then you're going to get what's called your plate setter. I use this variety. It's a cast iron. It won't break. It ain't going to mess up on me. You flip it over and you put it on there. Now, Cajun, tell them why we're doing that. Tell them why we don't want direct heat going on our meat. So, if we got direct heat coming on the meat, then what's gonna happen is it's gonna overcook, it's gonna cook too fast. Like we said earlier, it's a marathon, not a sprint. I mean, we're talking 12, 14 hours, it's slow cooking, we're getting techy with it, he's got it on his phone, we're charting it at a certain degrees. If you put it on and it cooks too fast, then guess what? you throw it on the table and it's not going to have the same flavor it's not going to be the same product it's not going to be as consistent so plate definitely helps keep the heat from searing the pork too fast and at the end of the day it's about being savory and it, let's face it like i said in the first video gives you a little bit more time to drink a little bit more beer bro Boom!
can drop it on there. So yeah, you want that convection style cooking. You want that heat to come around, hit the top, and then come back over. You get a flame going straight on that meat, you're gonna burn it. And you don't want burnt meat, right? Mm -hmm. You want bronzed meat, you want brown meat, you want it to get crispy little edges. You don't want it to get burnt and cut all the way through. Because the last thing you want to do is you got a big party coming because this isn't something you just want to cook for yourself. Right. Your family of three, four, five, six, eight. This is something that is outdoor, social setting, big, big company, big party coming over. Everyone's waiting, anticipation's high, and then all of a sudden you drop the ball. Can't have burnt meat. Don't want to burn your meat. All right, so then here's where we're catching up from. Remember all these girls, they want all this pretty stuff in there. We're talking the man side of this. We're talking dirt road, we're talking Cajun. It's raw, dude. So don't mix it in this Pyrex later on, brother. Take this thing, you want to mix it, mix it in this pan to start out. You want all these little things to stay in that pan, right? So you want to mix it in your pan on the inside. That'll make it nice. Don't let them women get in there and do that. Do this on your own. Pro tip, multi-use. Right. At the end of the day, you drank a lot of beer, you've been out here laboring on this green egg, last thing you want is your cleanup to be hour, two hours. Right. Makes your cleanup a lot more efficient, keeps everything nice and disposable. Right. So you would have you would have you would have rubbed your meat all that inside of this pan, right? So then we're gonna come outside and we're gonna take this and just set it on some foil for the moment, keep it clean, right? Now, double occasion, can you take that and throw that water in here first? So it's about a two-thirds, one-third mix, okay? So what you're doing is you're just pouring moisture inside of a pan that you're gonna create moisture inside your oven, okay? And then you're just gonna take some apple juice and you think, okay, that was two-thirds, now let's just estimate about one-third in there. Boom, nailed it. And then he's just gonna pour that in there. And we're not trying to waterboard the meat. We're just trying to give it a nice, Subtle kick, a little apple flavor without having to worry about working with the hickory or the apple chips. And then you're just gonna set that inside. Good to go, right? Then you're gonna take your grate. Another little pro tip. I like to set my grate a little bit cockeyed. Some people are gonna put it straight on like that, but it's gonna fall and flop on you. You set it a little bit cockeyed and it'll set up nice on the, on the pegs all the way around. So it's nice and firm for you. Got it? All right, it's time to put the meat on, brother. So then I just pick it up, get my hands dirty, and I always put it with the fat side up. You put that fat side up, when it melts, it's gonna melt down inside of it, okay? And you see, this is the flimsy side, or the side where the bone was, so I'm gonna take it and I'm put the thick side on the back. And then you come in with your meat thermometer. That's your pit thermometer. So you're gonna set that on the side. Where's that meat thermometer? Coming in with your meat thermometer, and you're gonna slide that deep, deep down in there. You always wanna check your meat temperature. That's a big part of cooking things right. And again, what are we looking at as far as consistent cook time, cook temperature? Looking at 180, 200, 220, 300, where are we at? Your goal is to set your temperature somewhere between 200 and 300. I say about 210 and 300. You can cook this thing at 300 and you'll be okay. But if you'll knock it down to where it's about 220, 225, 210, you'll get a nice low and slow. Your meat will be moist. It will come off right. And it's gonna give you plenty of time to just chill out and talk to your buddies. Enjoy that. So talk to us about regulating temperature because that seems to be the toughest learning curve with any type of smoker, green egg, Komodo Joe, doing it in a gas grill, it's regulating temperature. He's got something that's pretty unique. It's using modern technology. It's called a flame boss. So talk to us about flame boss. What does flame boss do? Flame boss is basically set up where it can regulate your meat temperature, it can regulate your pit temperature, and it will regulate your airflow. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of airflow first while Double O Cajun is plugging that in, and then we'll show you how the flame boss helps us with the airflow. So again, this is what you're gonna get with your egg when you first get it. That's when you're cutting it off and you're not using it. Once you're ready to use it, you're going to want something like this where you got hands, I mean, where you got a little place where you can move that and control the amount of airflow coming in. Okay. Pro tip figure out which way that thing slides 
and put that slide towards the front. So when you lift this later on, it doesn't slide back on you and your little eyelets stay the same. So I'm gonna set that at a real small amount of airflow to come out of the top. And for right now, we got this thing set wide open with air coming out of the bottom. So I'm gonna set this little thing in here that comes with the flame boss. The double occasion is handing me over the fan. So that just locks in. So just like and you growing up around the campfire, you are a scout. If you grew up outdoors, you're making a fire, fire needs oxygen in order to breathe. The more oxygen it has, the hotter your flame's gonna get. That's right. So what this does is it helps regulate your temperature. Therefore, if you're gonna cook 12, 14 hours, you got a way to regulate it without having to man it so much. So it makes the process more efficient, especially if you have kids, you have significant others, you got all types of things going on in your life. Last thing you want to do is be a slave to your green egg or whatever cooking device you're going to uh, do your Boston butts on. So this helps make that a lot more efficient. It's smart. It plugs into his phone. It sends him messages when he's off his temperature, below his temperature. It keeps him right on plane. When we're finished with our cook, I'm going to go show Double Cage and some of those pictures I took how this thing happened but true story first time I did this I came home set it up took my kids to go watch a movie done watch a movie took put them to bed woke up the next morning this thing was set ready to go flame boss that's how it did it so while our two characters are outside taking care of that Boston but we're gonna do a homemade slaw tell me what you what's your recipe so I got this slaw idea from Taqueria del Sol. They're all over Atlanta and in Athens, one of my, our favorite taco places to go to um, when we lived in Atlanta. And even now we'll make the drive, but um, I honestly think my slaw's better. Yes. Um, all right, so what do we need? So we start out with just a bag of coleslaw from Publix or wherever. And this is the easier way to do it if you don't want to hand slice exactly. the cabbage. Just get a bag pre-made, pre-sliced, all right, and your next ingredient is going to be your mayonnaise. Okay, and that's about three quarters of a cup. Perfect. All right, and then sugar. That's one quarter of a cup, which you can do a little more or less based on how you like your slaw. If you like it a little sweeter, a little tangier. Um, Don't you think that like every really good cook basically has to taste it as we go through every yes. process? It's like. You could follow the recipe, but I feel like you have to try it and then be like, oh, it needs a little bit more of this. Yes. It needs a little bit more of this. Absolutely. Oh my God, I put too much of this. Yes. Okay. 2,000 years later. Okay, Definitely. so perfect. And, and then, then what's next? we'll go ahead and do our lemon. All right. You're going to use a full lemon on this, but again, if you think it's too tangy, you may want to use a little bit less. All um, right. Sometimes I even start out with one lemon and then kind of go from there. I'm gonna just I'm start mixing this sure. for you. I love my little handy lemon juice, lemon and lime juicer. Okay, it all makes right. it super simple to get all the lemon juice, and that's why I think almost you can start with the half and go from there because it gets it all out of there. Perfect. Okay, and then um, jalapenos. Oh, yum. I love a lot of spice, so for me, I add more rather than less. But I love it. It's up to you again. Um, some people at this point, I'll do half of the slaw in one bowl and half of it in another to leave jalapenos out because I've had a lot of people request that I leave them out. Okay. They don't like the spice as much. Right. Can't handle the heat. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. There's a little heat that comes with the barbecue too, so. Yeah, hey. Yes. Love it. I love it. All right, so we've got the mayonnaise, we've got the sugar, the lemon, and the um, jalapeno, what else? So the last thing is really just salt and pepper, and okay. that's just to taste, you know? A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Um, again, taste it, add a little more. If, if you, uh, you always wanna start with a little less and then add a little more. If you I'm think obsessed it with salt, so like, I feel like you can never have too much salt, you can never have too, too much pepper. All right, wow, this looks amazing. Okay, so how does this look so far? That looks great, that's it. So we, how easy is that? Yes, so easy. And we'll show you later how to put it together in the taco. It's gonna be really good. So what are you gonna pair with our pork tacos? I'm gonna do a dry street corn salad. Um, it's super simple. 
and I'm actually gonna do it with raw corn. Many people do not know that raw corn is edible. So I'm gonna do this with um, some scallion, cilantro, lime, avocado, red pepper, and red onion. And it's gonna be delicious. Yum. All right, so how are your knife skills? I think pretty good. Perfect. I'm gonna have you um, cut off the kernels on these two. I'm gonna do these two. And we'll put them in the bowl. I know. <laughs> wow, they're going everywhere. I did not expect that. Stop it. Get some help. Okay. Yeah, that, that was probably so much smarter. And this is why we have this segment on amazing cooks. Yes. <laughs> All right. Now that we've got the raw core kernels in this bowl, we're going to have Tamara juice the lime. I'm going to do the red pepper. And then we'll do the avocado. And I will do the red pepper. Sorry. <laughs> yeah! She just went dirt road on that thing. Round of applause, round of applause. Thank you, audience. Okay, can you please edit that out? And I will do the red onion. All right, so why don't you do a half a lime in there? And I'm going to slice this red bell pepper. I think the easiest way to go is to do all four sides, and that way you don't have to worry about de-seeding it. If you have these parts right here, you just pull them out, throw them in the trash, and now we're going to finally chop it. I'm gonna try to hide my fingernails since I chopped off my one fingernail bed during that live demo with Taste of Tennis. Go across. All right, so. Then we're gonna throw that in. That's gonna give it nice color. Come and look. How about you um, cut this cheese or crumble it? We're using a Mexican crumbling cheese, which is uh, called queso fresco. Let's see. And I think the best way to do it is to use that fork, girl, and just uh, kind of pick at it and crumble it. Yes, that's perfect. In the meantime, I'm gonna do a little bit of red onion. Not too much, because it's very overpowering. If you wanna deflame the red onion, you can drop it in a bowl of uh, boiling water and that will help deflame the onion. And Oh my gosh, can you smell that red onion? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Strong. Yes, I'm about to look like Marilyn Manson. Here we go, boom. All right, and then we need a bit of green. So I'm gonna do, how about, do you wanna do scallions or do you wanna do cilantro for me? Um, I'll do either one. All right, let me have you do this cilantro. Okay. Cut these as small as you can, like finely chop them. Okay. And I'm gonna do the scallions. Now we're gonna do a little bit of scallions. Look at that seesaw action. Oh my gosh, I almost look like a pro, but I'm not. Here we go. Boom. Look at that. We're gonna put a little bit of chili powder, a little bit of salt. Do you have a spoon? Yes. Perfect. And then a little bit of black pepper. And then we're gonna toss, oh, I forgot the garlic. In the avocado. Yes, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, many things I forgot. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of garlic. Look at that. Peel it. She's scoring it into little small squares. And then the easiest way to take it out is to use a spoon and scoop it out. Do you use the whole avocado? Um, I think it depends on the person. I love avocado, so I would say yes. Perfect, and then let's kind of toss this. Yum. And there we have our raw street corn salad. Bam. So, labor of love, he's been cooking all night. How many hours? About 14, 15 hours. 14, 15 hours. 
like I said in the last video, it's a marathon, not a sprint. This isn't for you beginners. This is definitely something that everyone can do, but it takes a lot of love. So let's see what you got cooking. Well, you want to take a peek under the hood? We got to take a peek under the hood. Here we go. Look at that baby. Man, I ain't seen that much butt since the Sir Mix a lot video. Mmm, I like big butts and I cannot lie. So what are you cooking your temperature at? We try to put it about 210 to 300. There's a big range there where you can do it. I like to go in the 210, 225 range because I like a low and slow. If you're in a hurry and you want to cook this thing in about six, eight hours, it'll dry it out a little more to cook it all the way at 300 or up at 250. But if you put it down that 210, 220 range, it'd be nice, low and slow. What actually is the Boston butt? Where does it come from? What part of the hog is it? Is it the back side of the hog or Give, give us a little bit more about where the actual cut of meat is coming from. Yeah, you can do a pork shoulder, pork butt. They're sometimes called the same thing, especially when that pig's hunched over. It's that front leg and right there at the neck. So, so let's, let's get it all wrapped up and keep it warm, baby. So all you do is just grab your spatula, just slide it under a little bit, loosen it up. That's your meat thermometer coming out. You can touch it. Ain't no big deal. So flame boss is something that uh, Kurt definitely recommends. Oh yeah, we'll talk that through. Set it on there. And you close your hood back up. And we're going to take care of it. Now, the good news on this, as you hear my wife say, you can keep this warm for a couple hours. So it's not like when you're serving a bunch of people, it's got to come off at the exact time. Let me show you how the cook went last night. This is a little bit after we put it on. That meat got from like, it started out about 45, 50 degrees. It got up to 100 a few hours in. You can see where we started out kind of high, and then we came right down to our 210 cook level. That's a few hours later when the meat's at 160. It'll hold at 160 for a while. You see how it's nice and smooth? That yellow line, that shows you your meat, your meat cook line. And then we got it up to about 184, 185. I bumped it on up to about 225 on the pit temperature and the meat and the... Uh, meat temperature rose accordingly. So you want to get it to about 184, 185. And that's when that fat will melt. And then you take it off, put it in the cooler like we talked about, let it sit for a little bit. That fat will sit inside that meat real good, be ready to go. All right, so some people might be wondering, how does this Cajun get to know this country boy? Well, a lot of people will say about a smell. Now, contrary to belief, I know a lot of Alabama fans out there say we smell like corn dogs, but Let's be real, we probably are a combination between beignets and Tabasco sauce. But this is a whole different segment. So we're about to drop the butt, we're pulling the butt. A good old country boy smell like pork butt. That's it, that's it. So we're gonna show you how to open this puppy up, right? You gotta be smart and sensitive. When you're bringing it in, you can see how nothing is burned. Everything is bronze, nice and easy. Double occasion, can't get enough of that scent. Mm, smells right. so good, make your tongue want to jump out your mouth, wrap around your neck, and slap your brains out. Mm, slap your mama and bring it home to daddy. All right, here we go. So, uh, so when you're doing this, don't just go crazy, okay? These little crispy ends right here. Some of them mamas out there, they like to taste that little crispy end. So you just kind of oh. you kind of ease it apart, right? And then just chew it off, okay? But don't, don't tear it all apart so you lose those edges. And then once you kind of ease it apart like that, it's time to plate, girls. Sorry. So this means it's time to make margaritas. Yes, yes. I've been waiting all day for this. Me too. All right. And one for so you. Excited. Thank you. All right, for you guys. Boom. American Boku. And one for me. <laughs> All right. Doesn't this look amazing? I wish you could smell it. It's unbelievable. Oh, I can't wait. And I'm glad you said about the uh, seared edges because I want that taco. I mm. want all that seared edges. Yeah, if you just mumble it all up, you'll lose that rub we put on there originally. You want to keep those edges, like this one right here. I forgot how it got. That was mine. <laughs> that was mine. Yeah, jump on me. Yeah. All right. I was trying, but they were going to take away my privileges and I was going to have to get two both eyes. Okay, so let's get it plated. All right, now that those two characters have left the stage, 
it's our turn to plate it. So yes. how are we gonna plate this? Okay, this is how I like to make my tacos. Perfect. So I start with the barbecue. And again, I like the crispy pieces. I'm one of those mamas that likes the crispy pieces. Oh, so me too. The crispier, the better. Yeah. Um, so I kind of get those pieces. All right. And then my next layer is a barbecue sauce. I personally like a little thicker, a little sweet um, barbecue sauce, but I don't do a ton, just, just And where a is that bit. barbecue sauce from? What is that? I think this is a local barbecue sauce from Fox, Fox Brothers. Brothers. Oh, yes. Okay. Nice. It's one of my favorites. Perfect. Um, got that Costco. That's a yummy one. Um, and then I do the slaw. Your homemade Taqueria del Sol, but better mm -hmm. than ever. Perfect. And you've got your two slices of avocado already on there. A um, little sprig of cilantro. You can have that Perfect. or you can leave it out. Up to you. And then I'm going to, you want to fold that a little mm -hmm. bit. And I'm going to put a little bit of the street corn salad. Hold on. See if we can get that to look pretty. Perfect to go right next to it. And boom. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, like it. it. Like it. Subscribe. Like it. Subscribe and hit the notification bell. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Yeah. 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 Salute. Cheers.